Welcome back to Tap Into TV. This week, we travel to Hoboken, New Jersey with our original series, Homegrown. We discuss all things Oscars with David Schoner of the New Jersey Motion Picture and Television Commission. And we uncover the ancient origins of Valentine's Day. But first, we learn about the hot real estate market in Hoboken and visit a med spa on the city's newly redeveloped west side. So let's go to Hoboken with our homegrown host, Stephanie Willoughby. My name is Stephanie Willoughby and I'm a family photographer here in the great state of New Jersey. Jersey is full of small towns with big personalities, which is why I want to explore what makes your community special. I'm interested in the stories that your community would tell if it had a voice. This is Homegrown. Today we're exploring Hoboken. We're getting to know Hoboken as the city she is today. Still fun, still steps from the city, still buzzing with that signature busy energy, but Hoboken's grown up and so are the people that call Hoboken home. With loads of families, Hoboken is the perfect mix of family friendly by day and local craft brewery by night. Today we're gonna get to know some of the folks that set the vibe in this larger than life town and I can't wait to get started. This is Homegrown Hoboken. I photographed Pam and her family a while back with the arrival of her son. I had no idea at that time that meeting Pam would be like meeting all of Hoboken. Pam's not only an amazing wife and an amazing mom, she's also a highly sought after realtor here in Hoboken. Today we're gonna to be chit chatting about all things Hoboken because I can't wait to know, how much does it cost to live in this gorgeous city by the river? I'm Pamela Kalmus. I am the owner of PKL Properties and I live and work here in Hoboken out of the Keller Williams office. I'm a young mom, new mom. My family and I live on 15th and Washington Street here. So what's kind of neat about what you do is that you also live in the same area that you're working within, which is why I feel like you've got so much knowledge to share with us. Sure. So I kind of want to, I guess, hit the hit the pavement running yeah. um, and just talk to you a little bit about what does it cost to live in Hoboken? You know, like we've seen a lot, it's it's obviously quite developed, it's changed a lot over the years, but if I were looking at like a condo versus a brownstone, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Sure, so the price points in Hoboken, I would say there's a large range. We have a lot of different type of properties in Hoboken and the range would probably go from about 400,000 to like two million. Okay. And I would the average price point in Hoboken right now is seven hundred and fifty thousand. And for a brownstone, you're looking at an average of about one point five to two point five. So on that higher end, and that's depending on if it's renovated and whether it's a one family or a two family. So if you're living there and then renting out um, a condo below you to a tenant, you can take in, you know, uh, rental income. So there's a lot of different options in Hoboken, which makes it such a, a great place to look to buy property. So that's kind of what I would assume um, a price point would sure. be. And it's definitely on the higher end of most folks' budget. So where do you find that most of your clients are moving to Hoboken from? It's funny because a lot of people think that we're very expensive and we are. I don't want to say like Hoboken is inexpensive, but most of the people are moving from Manhattan and also Brooklyn. And when they come here, they're like, I can get all of this for $900,000. And those are my favorite clients, <laughs> you know, but um, it is the price point is still relatively affordable compared to Manhattan and also Brooklyn and other surrounding areas where you can get into the city very quickly. Also, um, what makes it a really interesting place to purchase is that we're 99% condos. So we have one or two, just a handful of co-ops in town, but it makes it much easier for a buyer to purchase here. You don't have to have as much post-closed liquidity. It makes it easier for first time home buyers. It makes it easier on the mortgage process. So there's other reasons, and there's obviously no board approval with condos. So there's other reasons why it makes it a more attractive place in my opinion. At what point in life are the people that you are, you know, typically selling homes to? We have all different types of people in Hoboken and ranging from, 
newly graduated. We also have Stevens students in town all the way until empty nesters. We do have a lot of families and a lot of young professionals living in Hoboken too because of its proximity to New York City. We've traditionally had the young professionals and um, you know families while, while they're starting a family, we're seeing that the families are staying, they're upgrading, so they're, they're coming, they're meeting here, they're buying their first property here together, they're having their kids there, then they're moving to the second property, they're having the second child there, and, and then and sometimes moving to the suburbs and sometimes now moving into these larger three and four bedroom condos or the brownstones so that they can stay here longer. And then lastly, we're seeing an influx of empty nesters. So we call it right sizing because it's not inexpensive and so it's not necessarily downsizing, although it's probably downsizing in, in size. Mm -hmm. I think it's been great because it's a lot of grandparents who have kids who either live in town or that live in the city or people who lived in Manhattan and, and always wanted to be close to everything that Manhattan has to offer, but also want to be close to their families that are living in New Jersey. And the benefit of living in Hoboken is that you don't actually have to cross a river to get to the rest of New Jersey. So that's yeah. kind of fun. I feel like there's so much of New Jersey to love, but... I, it's kind I of agree. My job, so yeah, <laughs> I agree. I'd rather go out to New Jersey than out the other yeah, way. So. I feel the same way. I think, and one of the things we strive to do with Homegrown is really to talk about how you know, we have these thoughts of these towns and what they are. Hoboken certainly has um, a reputation for, I think it's actually two reputations. One is this sort of like frat boy culture that I think most people sort of associate if you came through New York and Hoboken in, you know, the 90s, early 2000s. And then there's this sort of old school perception, right, where it's just these families that maybe um, came here, you know, 100 years ago. Um, and then that family still maybe owns their property or they've had kids and those kids have had kids and they've grown up in Hoboken. Are you seeing more of a merger of that? Because what you're explaining sort of sounds a little bit like that. Like Hoboken is still that old school, like family togetherness. Um, but then there's, of course, an influx of new people too. Do you find that with your um, families and neighbors here? Yes, definitely. So I always say one of the cool things about Hoboken is we have a lot of old and new. We have historic preservation, which has been great. If you uh, look in all of Hoboken in the middle, you can only build five stories. Now, what's great about that is that's keeping a lot of views for family. It's keeping a lot of sun for people that are living in the area. And it's keeping the population manageable versus in other towns and cities where they're letting people, you know, build, uh, you know, high rises everywhere. We're not doing that. So we're really keeping it. It's a city with a town feel, which is nice. And then in the respect of the old and the new, we still have, you know, all of the great you know, Italian restaurants and pizza places. And then we have new restaurants like Antique Bakery and also Pier 13, which is really nice to go on a gorgeous day like this. I love your enthusiasm about the town that you're in. And I also love that you seem to understand the culture because you're also a part of the culture of Hoboken. If you can had to describe Hoboken okay. in maybe five different words or phrases. How would you describe Ho Hoboken for somebody who hasn't been here before? Okay, so the first I would say is urban suburban. I'd also describe it as old and new, which we kind of touched upon, and that goes from the types of properties we have. We have some old character next to new condos, which is really cool views you know there's so many people that are getting fantastic views and if you're not from your home you can always walk right down to the waterfront you know community we've got a great community here there's people that really care about the safety and the cleanliness and the togetherness and lastly i would say washington street it's really iconic pam thank you so much for having us today of course it was my pleasure what do you think are you ready to move the real estate market here in hoboken is hot this we might have been able to guess. But with all of these cool shops and eateries, you can move here and potentially never move again. So that's worth it, right? To watch more Tap Into TV, follow us on social media at Tap Into TV. I'm so excited to visit Attain Med Spa. This isn't just any spa. This is a spa with amazing services like hair restoration, Botox, plasma facials. Are you with me? Are you daydreaming about all the services that you could have done here? Good, me too. Let's go check it out. 
why don't we start with you introducing yourself to us and telling us a little bit about your business. I'm Lauren Benmer, and we just opened up a teen med spa. And I moved here from New York, and I was used to doing all my treatments in New York, my, my Botox, my filler, facials. And I had a home base in a lot of different ways. And coming to Hoboken, I loved this very supportive community. It's so cool. I, they call it like the sixth borough because it's so close to Manhattan. And a lot of people live here actually work or used to live in Manhattan. So um, when I moved here, I thought it'd be really cool to kind of bring something that I've been missing and wanting for myself here. And um, I was so lucky with the audience here. Everyone was really interested in having that kind of home space every day med spa, if you will, where the treatments won't take a whole paycheck, won't take a whole day. They could all be done in an hour or less, which is really important because the modern day beauty regiment is not where you can sit in Elizabeth Arden all day. You actually have to go back to work or maybe you're picking up the kids or doing something else for yourself. So I kind of conceived all this to where it's one hour or less. I really love that philosophy because I feel like everybody's, especially in a, a culture like Hoboken, right? Because we've got a lot of young families, absolutely, young moms, young dads, and, um, and then, you know, other generational people as well. Um, but nobody across the board, regardless of your age, has like a ton of time on their hands. I know, it's true. Everything is so scheduled. And what I notice even in the building that we're in with all these um, there's a ton of kid drop-off studios, right? If they want to learn jujitsu or take an art class or coding, there's also a bunch of gyms in this building. So I was thinking, okay, mom and dads or whomever, they're already coming into this building. They've allotted X amount of time. How could I enhance that time? How can I add on to that me time, that break, and give them something accessible and amazing that's going to make them feel better? And also... It's almost like this building provides babysitting, right? So they can do their, their facial and their Botox and their filler, or anything that they're doing while having their children cared for at a place that they would enjoy. Right. So it, it all just kind of came together perfectly. Yeah, it sounds like it's, it's a full service, right? So for you've, sure. you've got all the bases covered here. So one of the things that struck me as interesting about Attain Med Spa is that you have a, a business here um, that I think a lot of people don't necessarily talk about the services right. that they receive. I do. I also think it's really hard to talk to like your dermatologist, for instance, sure. um, and maybe admit that like you are looking for something else. Like, what do we do about anti-aging, or what are we doing um, towards our health goals, etc. Absolutely. So, do you find that like a lot of people are opening up to you about the services that they need? I think I've, well, for starters, absolutely. But it's also culturally, it's becoming much more accepted and understood, and even expected to do more to take care of yourself. So I think it's interesting that you took this philosophy having, I mean, you're new to Hoboken, is that right? Brand new. Brand new to Hoboken. Um, you just moved here. It's not been a year. It's not even been six months, I don't no, think. No, I, I know. Mean, We're six coming months. in hot. How do you feel um, Hoboken, how do you feel like the culture of Hoboken has influenced your business? Everybody's very warm, very friendly. I've noticed that when they see people starting something, a new business, a new idea, a new member of the community, they instantly want to support. I almost feel like people move here because they've, or, or a lot of them have lived in Manhattan and lived this very fast paced, kind of cut off lifestyle, right? I lived in New York for 17 years. I, I have kids that I had in New York for 17 years. I would know the moms in my circle, but even getting into an elevator, nobody made eye contact. And then you move out here and people want to say hello to you and know who you are and get to know your kids. Is this the like Jersey you pictured before you ever I, got it's, here? It's interesting, yeah. But at the same time, I feel like it's really its own world here because you have people coming from all different places, all different cultures, and everyone just kind of comes together. And again, I think also being close to New York, you kind of see a lot of the trends and tips or things that are coming out of New York. But at the same time, Nobody wants us to become Manhattan. Right. You know, they want to protect the integrity of, of what is Hoboken, and that I really enjoy. I feel like you bring up a really good point about protecting what's here and also like growing, because Hoboken is where we are in yeah. the Monroe building was not a super developed place before. No, um, from what I understand, not at all. And there's new development going, even as we speak, like, 4,000 units and this and that everywhere. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about, Lauren, is that 
you don't just have women coming to your business. Is that right? Like, Oh, I, I have men and women and all different ages coming. And that's, again, part of that, like, me time, those social media platforms. It does not matter your age, your race, your orientation. Your really, it does not matter. People want to take better care of themselves. And people are open to learning ways that you can do that. I feel like everybody is, I think to your point, really thinking about their health, taking that more seriously, um, and also like feeling good about themselves. Like it is an era where we get to kind of express that. And there's so much more of us just on video and um, photographed and, you know, so. I mean, just in a day, what do they say that on average, people take at least two pictures of themselves a day? People want to feel ready all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to have something relevant and available and sustainable for everybody. And again, not a whole day or a whole paycheck. You being new to Hoboken, um, are there any words that you could give us that would sort of describe Hoboken in your eyes? Oh my gosh, that is um, proud. Everyone here has such tremendous pride in in their city, in their community. Um, there's just such a beautiful sense of community here. People are very active. The other thing is people here are very vocal. So if they see a park that needs to be fixed, if they see something that isn't in the best interest of their kids or the community at large, people really rally. There is such a tremendous, tremendous amount of pride here. Mm. People really love Hoboken. I, I mean, you go to any of these street festivals or stores here, there are so many Hoboken t-shirts and mugs. And even the people that live here walk around with their Hoboken stuff. So, I mean, it's really nice to be in a place that people are really proud of and want to protect and see grow. And it's, it's really, it's just a really lovely place not to just live and have a business, but to have a family in. I love that, Lauren. It's been Thank so great you. talking to you. Thanks for having us today. I'm so excited. Thank you so much to you guys as well. I feel like Attain wants us to live our best life by rejuvenating our self-care routine. Any place whose slogan is, succeed in achieving what one has worked for and desired, can make it on my short list of favorite places to visit. This is the way I remembered Hoboken when I lived here in my 20s, except with a few more little ones and a whole lot more social media. Oh, Hoboken, you are one fun city. Bookstores and specialty shops, bands and bars, museums and cupcakes. Hoboken has a little something for everyone and it's almost in its own renaissance of sorts. The vibe of this town is found in its mix of history coupled with some small businesses who are reshaping the way we see and play in Hoboken. It's my hope that Hoboken can hold on to that balance that makes it so special. We've learned so much about this historic city by the water. There's so much greatness in this place. So many small businesses and people that are really changing the culture of Hoboken. Hoboken is still fun and outgoing and beautiful, but it's more than that too. It's also family friendly and a little bit more grown up. So when you're here, please visit the friends that we made here today. After all, they're self-made and homegrown. You can find Homegrown on Tap Into TV or on Instagram at HomegrownNJ. We'd love to hear about your small town and what makes it great. For Homegrown, I'm Stephanie Willoughby. We'll see you next time. To see all of our latest videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tap Into TV. Well, tonight is the Academy Awards, and I'm here to talk about some Oscars with David Schoner from the New Jersey Motion Picture and Television Commission. There's a lot of film and TV production going on here in the state of New Jersey. David, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Well, we've got a lot to talk about. Yes. So before we get into the Oscar discussion, tell me a little bit about the film and television production that's going on in New Jersey, especially about the tax incentive program that's been expanded. That's right, so New Jersey has a film and TV tax incentive program, and recently, actually a week ago, Governor Murphy um, upped it again and extended it for another five years. So it's very exciting. So I I want you to break this down for me because our audience may not know what this means. So let me set up a scenario and, and try to help me explain it. So when a movie is going to be produced and there's money to back that movie, the movie has to be filmed and produced somewhere. 
And so the state incentives are put in place to lure business to New Jersey. The correct. So what we do is we're incentivizing film companies to come and spend money in the state to hire crews, to use local services, to use businesses, locations. And so the only way the film companies really work when we track them down is it's about incentives. Wow. So tell me about some of the films that are in the Oscars this year that were filmed in New Jersey. Well, we have two big ones. Obviously, the main one is The Joker, and the second one is The Irishman. So give me a little background of where these were produced and, and what was done here in the state. So with The Joker, it was actually quite intense. When you look at Wayne Manor with the Chaplin banners hanging down, that's actually the Brennan Courthouse in Jersey City. And when you look at the theater where the Joker is and Bruce Wayne's parents are walking down the alleyway, that is the Lowe's Jersey City in Jersey City. And the main set piece is in Newark, where the Joker's flipping the banner around and those kind of guys chase after him and kind of beat him up. And then also where they're riding around in the car, the police car, and everything's burning, Gotham's kind of descending into hell. Wow. So, I mean, these days, so much of movie making is done with CGI or computers. But if I'm correct, you know, a big part of downtown Newark was literally physically transformed into these scenes. Is that right? That's correct. A lot of directors now really want to have as much realism in their product as possible. And so they do some CGI, but it's really conducive for the actors and the environment to create this type of place. And so 10 blocks in uh, Newark, in downtown Newark on Market, Broad Street, Halsey, Branford, was transformed into Gotham City. Tell me about some other films and TV shows that might not be in the Oscars, but were also done in New Jersey. Well, our big thing right now is we have two TV series that just finished airing. One is still currently airing, but they're finished filming. One is called Lincoln Rhyme, The Bone Collector. It's actually on Friday nights, and it features uh, Lincoln Rhyme, who's chasing down a serial killer. They're based out of the Izod Center in, in East Rutherford. And the other one is Emergence, which is a story that takes place in Long Island, but they film it here in Jersey, and they just finished their season. So some people may not realize that New Jersey was the birthplace of film production. Tell me a little bit about that. New Jersey is the birthplace of film production because of Thomas Edison over in West Orange. And also Fort Lee is a major hub and was a major hub during that period of time when the turn of the century, when you talk about greats, Universal, Eclair, all these fantastic old film studios, they were all based out of Fort Lee. And I would say almost 90% of the population was working in some sort of film related services back then. And in Fort Lee, there's a development and the grand opening of the Barrymore Center. Tell me about that. Yes, so uh, Fort Lee is actually has a, a theater that they're going to be opening up. It's the Barrymore Film Center. It's approximately 260-seat house. And they're also going to be having a museum along with it as well. And so it's very exciting because this theater is going to be honoring the birthplace of filmmaking and New Jersey's place in the filmmaking world. So David, before we get to uh, your Oscar picks, mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit more about your own filmmaking experience and some of the projects you've recently been doing. So I personally like to keep myself creatively sane, and that's a big deal of what I do. Well, and hold I, on a second. Creatively sane. Can you explain <laughs> to me what you mean by that? Well, creatively sane is I love working on other people's projects. It's really what I do. I thrive on it. I love multitasking. It's a real high to help filmmakers facilitate stuff and get it done in New Jersey, because it's all about filming in the state. And so what I try to do on the side is I'll make my own little projects. And currently, I have a uh, kids' TV series pilot that I made called Arthur Futuro about this middle school kid who finds out that his future self comes to him and says, you have to change the present. Wow. And yeah. uh, you've shot a, a series of these episodes? Tell me a little so bit. So we shot the pilot. We filmed the pilot last year. And right now, we're going to film festivals and trying to get some attention on the series. And it's also a lot of fun because it was a pleasure and a blast to get it made. And if I'm correct, you shot it in a nearby school right here down the road. Yes, we did. We filmed in Cedar Grove High School and also in Cedar Grove Middle School and actually used a lot of the Cedar Grove kids in it as well. We hired regular professional kids as well, but it was a nice little mixture of uh, getting the community involved. And if I'm correct, some of the local schools have recently been used for music videos and things like that? They are. We try to encourage school systems, especially in these budgetary tight times, to have filmmaking and to host filmmaking. Obviously, you have to weigh the pros and the cons during the school day, not during the school day. But it's a great way for a school system to make some extra money. So let's get to our Oscar predictions. Let's just focus on Best Picture for now. Let's take a look at the nominees. Ford versus Ferrari, 
The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. So the Academy has expanded the number of nominees. It used to be five and now it's many more. Right. Do, do you think that takes away from the competitiveness? It adds to the competitive? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think the, what the Academy wanted to do is that they felt that the five was too limiting and that there would not be an expansion of people's choice and taste. And so as you can see with all the nominees this year, it's a little bit all over the place. And I don't mean that in a bad way. You've got a film like The Joker, but you also have a film like 1917, and then you have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So it's a little bit of a different taste, and I think they're just trying to expand the palette of what you can choose from. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay. And you can answer this any way you want, but just tell me who you think, A, who will win Best Picture, but also maybe what your favorite movie is if it's different from who you think will win. Just Go ahead. So my favorite picture is going to be Joker. I think the Joker is going to win Best Picture, but I also have a favorite with Parasite. I like Parasite a lot, and I also like Jojo Rabbit as well. I really enjoyed those films, but I think Joker is going to grab it. I'm in that camp as well. I think Joker's got it. I think it has stiff competition with 1917. 1917 is also a choice. Uh, it's a really good choice as well, too. Yeah, Golden Globe winner and BAFTA, if I'm correct. Yes, correct. I'm a fan personally of the score of Joker, which was very moving, and I recognized that when I was in the theater watching it, and, uh, and I think that'll win best score. All I have are negative thoughts. So David, thanks for joining me. This has been great. And uh, we'll have you back soon. In fact, we will see you at the Garden State Film Festival. That's right, from March 25th to March 29th. Right, so stay tuned for our coverage of the Garden State Film Festival in Asbury Park this year, and enjoy the Oscars. Tap Into is a network of more than 80 franchise local news sites with more than 10 million readers. Bring local news to your community while owning your own business. Tap Into provides you with the training, support, and technology to help you build a profitable business. To find out more, visit www.starttap.net. Valentine's Day is rapidly approaching, so Tap Into TV decided to research the origins of this day of love. And we discovered its colorful history and the lasting ways that the holiday is still celebrated today. Valentine's Day is widely known as the day of the year when love is celebrated. And indeed, February has been a month of romance for centuries. The St. Valentine's Day we observe today evolved from both ancient Roman and early Christian history. There are many legends about who St. Valentine was. One story dates from the third century AD. Apparently, Emperor Claudius II of Rome believed that single men made better warriors, so he banned marriage for young men throughout the empire. However, a priest named Valentine secretly continued to perform marriages for young couples. When his actions were discovered, he was put to death on February 14th. During the Middle Ages, it was commonly believed in France and England that February was the beginning of birds mating season, which added to the idea that the middle of the month should be a day for romance. In England, Valentine's Day began to be widely celebrated around the 17th century. Esther Howland was an artist and businesswoman who popularized Valentine's Day cards in America and published the first Valentine in 1849. According to the Hallmark Corporation, an estimated 145 million Valentine's Day cards are sent each year, making Valentine's Day the second largest card sending holiday with only Christmas ranking higher. To learn more about Tap Into TV, visit tapintotv.net. To see all of our latest videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tap Into TV. And that's our show for this week. Next Sunday, we'll return to Hoboken with Homegrown and we'll take a tour of some historic sites ahead of the President's Day holiday. Thanks for watching.